Hello friends, this video on solid states part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now we'll discuss about the classification of crystals. Till now what we have discussed, we have discussed what are crystals, what are, what are amorphous, right? We also discussed a little bit about polycrystals. Now then we told that in this chapter we'll be focusing more on the crystals because the nature of us crystallinity and most of the things we see around us are crystals. So the crystals based on the nature of the intermolecular force operating between them, based on the nature of intermolecular force operating between them, they are classified as molecular, ionic, metallic and covalent solid. There are four further classification of crystals. We will discuss about each of these in detail. Molecular, ionic, metallic and covalent solid. In fact, the molecular solids are further classified into non-polar molecular solids, polar molecular solids, hydrogen bonded molecular solids. Ionic solids are not further classified and metallic solid also doesn't have any further classification. And then we have this covalent solids, they are also called network solids. This is my typical uh, classifications of solids, uh, the class crystalline solids. One, two, three and four. The molecular solids are further classified into four different categories. Correct. So let's start with molecular solids. See, molecular solid is a solid composed of molecules. Please note, as the name suggests, molecular. That means we are talking about the molecules that are held together by van der Waal forces. Right? It has molecules held together by Van der Waal force. Correct. So Van der Waal force, a London force, dipole, dipole uh, interaction and dipole and induced dipole force. We'll talk about these things in the next few slides. These are, these force are weaker than the covalent or ionic bonds actually. So generally the molecular solids are, they are soft and they have low melting points right? because this force are pulled by I'll say weak force. So they are generally soft and low melting points, right? And pure molecular solids are insulators. The pure ones are insulators, but actually you can uh, make them insulator by doping it. We will discuss about that, how to dope a particular uh, solid to make it, uh, to change its property. So the examples can be my hydrocarbons, my ice, solid carbon dioxide. So those are my examples of molecular solid, right? White phosphorus, sulfur. I can have my uh, solid halogens, for example, chlorine, hydrogen, iodine correct these are my molecules already right n2 o2 so2 ice so2 ice so2 ice solid carbon dioxide so if you see in ice also we have this water molecule is one entity and there are so many water molecules they are linked by hydrogen bond Correct. So here the entity we are talking about is one molecule. Right? There are so many molecules linked together by weak water wall force. Correct. So let's and since the classification of molecular solids are polar, non-polar, and we have this wonderful force also, we discussed about these things in the earlier chapter. But let's do a recap of these kind of stuff before we move ahead and try to understand the different types of molecular solid. So let's talk about the intermolecular force. As I told, inter, inter uh, word is similar to internet, right? Internet. That means anything that is uh, acting between uh, the particles. So they are force of attraction or repulsion acting between particles. It is not uh, among, for example, you know, for example, what I have, right? I'm not talking about the force between hydrogen and oxygen. I'm talking about the force between this water and this water. So 
the way i differ is intranet is intramolecular that is within the organization or, or within the uh, same molecule you have different atoms the fourth atom between them and intermolecular is like internet uh, i mean two different uh, organizations and you can just interact right so two different molecules and there's a force between these molecules they call intermolecular so intermolecular force is a force of attraction and repulsion uh, acting between particles right and some of all the attractive or repulsive force is called wonderwall force you saw you add and subtract all the force what you get is wonderwall force and there are various types of wonderwall force as i told london force or called dispersion force we have something called dipole dipole force in dipole force we have hydrogen bond and we have something called dipole and induced dipole force we have discussed this kind of things so let's discuss once again dispersion force or london force they are generally exhibited by non polar molecules why because uh, of the temporary movement of electrons i'll show you how and their magnitude depends on the polarizability of the particles for example i have this oxygen now you see each of these has uh, two ele uh, four electrons each now what happens is these electrons move this electrons move what happens is this guys get slightly negative charge this has slightly positive charge right because electrons are this oxygen here also since oxygen moved toward this oxygen this gets slightly negative and slightly positive now if you see slightly negative and slightly positive charge here there will be some force of attraction between these two correct this is my london force they are very very weak force and they and their magnitude as i told depends on the polarizability of particles in this case my oxygen and this is because of the temporary movement of electrons correct and this happens uh, this is observed uh, you know in a particular compound now if you see uh, the dipole dipole force again so i have hcl for example this has slightly negative charge because the chlorine is more electronegative hydrogen is slightly positive charge less negative so if you see here also same thing will happen so this hydrogen and this chlorine will have force of attraction correct this is called dipole dipole force this acts between molecules they have permanent dipole Right, because SCL will have permanent dipole. We discussed about these things, so I'm not uh, discussing in details. So this interaction is stronger than London force because they are very weak force. But again, this is still weak. They are weaker than ion-ion interaction. We'll see that, for example, Na plus and Cl minus will have more strong force because the the charge on them is more. This is partial positive and partial negative charge. This is real positive and real negative charge, right? So that way. Then we have the hydrogen bond. So for example, HF. Right, this uh, and this is part of dipole dipole force, but this is only with uh, high polar molecules like NH, OH, HF. So in this case, if you see the electronegative difference is more, right? And this is limited only to oxygen, nitrogen, fluorine. This is the example of uh, hydrogen bond. Also, you can see water also has the same hydrogen bond force. Slightly negative, slightly positive, slightly positive, slightly negative, slightly positive. Right, they'll have, they'll have a force of attraction between them. Sorry, this and this, and, or this and this, like that. So this is my hydrogen bond. They also quite strong force. Then we have dipole and induced dipole force. So this is type of force operated between the particles having one has the permanent dipole, right, and the other. Is lacking the permanent dipole. This has permanent dipole, so this particular will induce this. If you see, this is one and this is two. One is having permanent dipole, two is not having. The the one will induce a dipole on two. Two will also have a dipole now, and then they'll there'll be a force of attraction between them. Correct. And again, induced dipole depends on the polarizability of this two. And molecules of la large size can easily be polarized. So if it is large, it is easily be polarized. Then uh, we'll, let's also discuss the polar and non-polar molecules because we'll talk about the polar and non-polar molecular uh, solids. See, non-polar means there is no charge, right? And polar, if you see, HF, if you see. 
F will have slightly negative, slightly positive. This is slightly negative, slightly positive. So the electronegative difference is more, it will be polar. Right here also nitrogen will have slightly negative charge, slightly positive, slightly positive, and slightly positive. Oxygen will be, this will have slightly negative and slightly positive because of resonance. So these are polar molecules which will have partial positive, partial negative charge, maybe because of resonance or our difference in electronegativity. Non polar molecules are almost neutral. For example, if you see carbon hydrogen, the electronegativity difference is not that much. So all these carbon hydrogen atoms are almost neutral. Right? Oxygen also, same thing. Hydrogen also, same thing. So polar means they have poles. Positive charge, negative charge poles. Non polar means they don't have any poles. Charge pole. So having understood, I mean, uh, having done the recap of polar, non-polar and uh, different kind of uh, Van der Waals force, let's again start with the, the classification of molecular solids. As I told, molecular solids are nothing but solid composed of molecules held together by Van der Waals forces, right? And there are different types of molecular solids. The first one is non-polar molecular solids. So good example is hydrogen, iodine and chlorine. They are non-polar. Because the I mean there is they are same compound types, so there is no chance of electronic difference between them. So they don't have, have any charge. They are held together by a weak dispersion force or London force. So they are soft. Right? They are non-conductor of since they are soft, they have low melting point, and they are generally liquid or gas only at room temperature or pressure. They are generally liquid or gas at room temperature or pressure i think this is iodine solid iodine yeah so this is the uh, molecular solid uh, structure actually if you see these are you can take it as iodine two iodines and they are held together by some force right so this is how it, it is We'll talk about the structure in detail in the next few slides. Just understand this is how it looks like a cuboid or cubic shape cell which has some molecules. Right? These molecules, if you see, are held together by the weak Montreal force. Like that. Correct. The next is the polar molecular solvent. For example, HCl. Right, it has this permanent dipole, and these have this poles. They're polar molecules on it. They have strong since they have uh, poles. They have strong dipole interaction. They are also soft, and they are non-conductor of electricity. They are also soft, and they are non-conductor. Correct. Again, here also most of them are gas at room temperature and pressure. The next is hydrogen bonded. A good example is ice. So in ice, I have H2O, and these are all bonded by H hydrogen bonded. Hydrogen bond. They are also non-conductor. And we'll tell you why because they don't have any free electrons. They are liquid, and they are or soft solid at room temperature. They are liquid or soft solid at room temperature this is the structure of water actually if you see this is my oxygen this is my hydrogen this is my hydrogen this is one water molecule this is another water molecule if you see they are interacting correct by this hydrogen molecule. and here also if you see the structure is like this in one cell we have so many water molecules we'll talk about the structures in the next few slides so these are my crystalline types, molecular solids, sorry, the molecular crystalline solids type, hydrogen bonded, polar and non-polar. Only three different types of molecular solid. Right? In hydrogen bonded, we have hydrogen bond. In polar, we have uh, poles, for example, H plus Cl minus. In non-polar, we don't have any poles, for example, iodine, chlorine. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos.
attempt free online tests, get pre-study materials, find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.